the first part of what we did tonight was to show that in terms of major issues of theology and major issues of central biblical teaching, the Christian Bible simply is not consistent with the Jewish scriptures. There are other, I would say, more minor problems. One is simply in the way the Christian Bible does not get its facts straight in terms of the way it cites the Jewish Bible. You would think that if it was the word of God, God would have known how to quote the Hebrew Bible properly. So here we have in the book of Acts chapter 7, and Joseph sent word, here in the book of Acts, they're recounting the story of Jacob and his children. And Joseph sent word and invited Jacob, his father, and all his relatives to come to him, 75 persons in all. And Jacob went down to Egypt, and there he passed away, he and our fathers. And from there they were taken to Shechem, and they were laid in the tomb that Abraham had purchased for a sum of money from the sons of Hamor in Shechem. This is the presentation, the narrative of the Christian Bible about a story from the Jewish Bible. Now, in modern day terms, if you went to CNN, they would say, you got to have your fact checkers, right? You want your fact checkers. So when you check the facts here, it does not look good. One reason is that the Jewish Bible teaches us that it wasn't 75 people who went down to Egypt. It was 70 people who went down to Egypt. Now, let me share with you one of the major ways in which Christians will try to answer almost all of these problems. The Christian response, which we'll see, doesn't even work. But the Christian response will be, look, the New Testament writers were basing themselves upon the Greek translation of the Jewish Bible called the Septuagint. They weren't quoting from the Hebrew Masoretic text. They were quoting from the translation of the Hebrew into Greek. Now, we'll get to this claim in a few minutes, but it doesn't always work, even for their explanation. So, for example, there are three places in the Bible which teach you that 70 people went down to Egypt. Genesis chapter 46, verse 27, Exodus chapter 1, verse 5, Deuteronomy verse 10, chapter 10, verse 22, and the Septuagint in the first two of those places actually does say 75 went down to Egypt. But in Deuteronomy, the Septuagint gets it right and says it was 70. Okay, Exodus chapter 1, verse 5. I'll take a look here. What's it say? It says, okay, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. So, all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob, that means directly descended from Jacob, were 70 because Joseph was already in Egypt. Okay, so that's a little confusing, but all, all the 70, what I'm getting from this is the 70, the number 70 is talking about the of Jacob. That would be not including his wives or the, the maidservants of his wives. They are not directly descended from the loins of Jacob, right? Or his son's wives. They're, they're also not direct descendants of Jacob. So that's sort of what that says to me. Now, if we go back to uh, Genesis chapter 46, verse 27, this is the beginning of the uh, counting of uh, well, the beginning starts Genesis chapter 46, verse 7. And it's sort of the, from there on, it goes and counts out the 70 souls of Jacob's family, okay? And it says, his sons, and his sons' sons with him, and his daughters, 
and his son's daughters and all his seed he brought with him to Egypt. So there's his sons, his son's sons, and his son's daughters and his daughters and all his seed. Okay? Um, and these are the name of the children of Israel which came, which came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons. And then he goes through the lineage of um, Jacob and his sons. But if you look at it, uh, it there's certain verses here where it adds up, uh, like in like in verse 15. These are the sons of Leah, which she bare to Jacob in Padan Aram with his daughter Dinah. All the souls of his sons and his daughters were 33. So it gets a little confusing if you start to really look and count them. It's like, does that include Jacob, or does that include Dinah, or does that include um, um, uh, Leah? You know, it's it's a uh, it's a little confusing. Okay, so and there's other parts where they add up uh, the. Um, Verse 18, these are the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to Leah his daughter, and those she bore unto Jacob, even sixteen souls. So when you look at the sixteen, it includes Zilpah, which is not right out of the loins of Jacob. It's one of his uh, concubines, okay? And... You can go through it anyway, and that's um, where I'm going to start, okay, with the 70. Recording, yep. Okay, now this is a website, uh, bible.ca, which does a pretty good job here. It just takes a, a quick Google to find something about this stuff. And what does Bible.ca tell us about the 70 or 75? Okay, here's two Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, Exodus 11, 1 to 6. Or no, Exodus 1, 1 to 6. 75, it says. Okay, that's on uh, Qumran 4Q13. And in 4Q1, Exodus 1, 3 to 17, on this one, 75 souls. Okay, so now we see the book of Exodus on some of the Dead Sea Scrolls say they don't say 70 they say 75 okay so what they go on to say is that uh, um, that um, here we have Hebrew manu Hebrew manuscripts of the book of Exodus saying 75 souls when the Masoretic book of Exodus says 70 souls. So now we have two different books of Exodus in the Hebrew. One is 75 and one 70. Okay, so primary Bible witnesses. Okay, 70 or 75. This is a complex issue, which it is, because four places in the Bible, the number 70 verse 75 are reference. The Masoretic text reads 70 in all three Old Testament texts. Genesis, the three that he quoted there, right? The Septuagint reads 70 persons in Deuteronomy 10, but it reads 75 persons in uh, Genesis and Exodus. The New Testament in Acts, as he pointed out, the Stephen uh, reads 75 persons. 
So we're seeing that uh, this is not a, a new issue, okay? Now, variant vi Bible verses of Exodus 1.5, which I just read, okay? All the persons who came from the loins of Jacob were 70, but Joseph was already in Egypt. That's in the Mesoretic text. In the, in the LXX, which is the Septuagint, it says in that same verse, Joseph was already in Egypt, and all the persons from Jacob were 75. Okay? Then there's Genesis, variants of Genesis 46. Okay? A, and the sons of jo Joseph who were born to him in Egypt were two. All the persons of the house of Jacob who came to Egypt were 70. That's in the Masoretic text, which is the one the, ri the rabbi is using, right? And then B, and it says 75 for the same verse, and that's in the Septuagint, okay? So in Deuteronomy 10, the Masoretic and the Septuagint both say 70 persons, right? And there's the examples, okay? And then Stephen in the New Testament reads 75 persons, okay? That's in the book of Acts. Now, so here it is, what they're saying. This, this, however, presents no difficulty. And as has often been pointed out, Genesis 46.27 in the Septuagint, for example, does not include Jacob and Joseph, but does include nine sons of Joseph in the reckoning, thereby arriving at 75 souls. Now, what about what is this nine sons of Joseph? In the book of Jubilees, 4433 in Jubilees, right? It says, and but five died in Egypt before Joseph and had no children. So they're saying, okay, those, there's five children of Joseph that died. That's what the Book of Jubilees claims, okay? So that's why, that's where the extra five people come in in some texts and not in others, right? And then um, we don't need to worry too much about Ezekiel the tragedian. Uh, that's another long drawn out explanation the, the 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 crux of the matter is this okay here's a master summary of all archaeological evidences to date now you'll find you'll notice that most of these existed these two different numbers 70 or 75 existed before Jesus at least a hundred years before Jesus. So 150 BC, Jubilees, reads 70 people. 150 BC, Ezekiel the tra Tragedian, reads 70. 100 BC, Dead Sea Scroll 4Q1, reads 75 people in Exodus, right? 100 BC, Dead Sea Scroll 4Q13 reads 75 persons in Exodus, in Hebrew. Uh, 30 AD, Philo, 75 persons on the migration of Abraham, right? 36 AD, Acts, 75 persons. 70 AD, Josephus, Josephus 70 persons, right? Uh, 325 A.D., Septiguant, 75 persons. 325 A.D., Septiguant, 70 persons in Deuteronomy. 1000 A.D., the Masoretic Texts read 70 persons. It's actually more like about 700 A.D. The Aleppo Codex would 
which is what the Masoretic text is built upon, that reads 70. So we can see that this discrepancy existed before Jesus, okay? So the solution, both 70 and 75 are valid due to different ways of computing the number. Josephus calculates 70, but that doesn't include Jacob. Philo calculates 75, but states that Moses used 70, which didn't include didn't include five of the youth, the five of the daughters or something. The daughter, there's no daughters listed in the list except for Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. But it also says that Jacob brought his son's daughters, but it doesn't name any of the son's daughters. So that might be the five, okay? So there's different ways of counting and different ways of looking at how you come up with the number, okay? The conclusion, we find direct evidence through the Dead Sea Scrolls, those two, two Dead Sea Scrolls quoted above, for two different Hebrew manuscripts in use at the same time, long before the time of Christ, that reads 75 people. This proves that the great Septuagint was translated in 282 BC with precision from a Hebrew manuscript. So it's not like the Septuagint got it wrong. The Septuagint was using a Hebrew manuscript that said 75 souls because the Dead Sea Scrolls prove that these Hebrew manuscripts existed. Okay. Now, with a variety of calculation methods used in the Torah and openly discussed by Philo and Josephus, it is clear that both the numbers 70 and 75 were considered authentic. The Greek Septuagint preserves the autograph numbers in all three places. The quotation by Stephen and Acts shows us that the original reading was 75 persons persons in at least two places in the Hebrew Bible, the Masoretic text therefore shows that Jews changed the number from 75 to 70 in Genesis 46-27 ex and Exodus 1-5 in order to agree with Deuteronomy 10-22, which read 70. This change was to correct an apparent contradiction in their Hebrew text. But in the end, they simply were unaware that different computation methods were being used by Moses in the autograph. Okay, so we don't have to figure all this out, but this shows, without a doubt, that this was a, uh, this this uh, apparent contradiction and this discrepancy was before Jesus came along that um, it wasn't Christians that got it wrong. These Both of these numbers existed within Jewish circles before Christianity even started. So what the rabbi He's saying Christians got the number wrong and quoted it wrong. That's not the case. The case is that they quoted a different number than what the number he likes is. Okay? And the reason there are different numbers is because you can calculate it differently in different places. So, um, and, and now he's saying, well, what might have happened is that the Jews corrected the Masoretic text. They did do some corrections here and there uh, because, um, you know, when you use scribes to copy things over and over again, uh, there are sometimes small errors here and there, and it might have been just considered one of those, and they did uh, correct things when they finally... Uh, brought all the text together to protect the text. They did some minor corrections. Nothing that uh, seriously changes the Bible or anything like that, but that might have been one of those corrections. 
So, um, you know, what does it all mean? It means that it's not a Christian thing. It's a Jewish thing. And Stephen was just uh, quoting one of the other texts and not the Masoretic text. So it doesn't make him wrong. It makes him, perhaps, uh, the text that he was using was a Dead Sea Scroll Hebrew text uh, from a different scribe, a different school. That's all it means. And um, the other thing is, too, about talking about the Septuagint. The Septuagint is a Greek uh, translation of the Hebrew scriptures that was done uh, in Egypt uh, about 300 BC, 325 BC. And um, that includes a lot of um, tradition that does not necessarily belong in the Hebrew text. Um, and the original, we don't have the original Christian text. The, the Christian text that we have are about 300 years after Christ is the oldest and it's not a very good one either but so so we don't have a lot of originals and the Eastern Church who copied these texts um, the originals may have been written in Aramaic or, or possibly Hebrew but the Eastern Church was using the Greek text, the Septuagint. It was the most popular, and uh, naturally, as the translations got copied, the Septuagint rendition of the script, Hebrew scriptures began to be used more and more. And uh, we just don't yet have any um, Hebrew renderings of the uh, Christian texts or, or Aramaic. So it might have been an Aramaic to begin with, but we don't have any copies of that. All we have is later stuff that is probably converted to Septuagint readings. It doesn't necessarily mean that Jesus used the Septuagint. Um, and the point that I made earlier in an earlier video is that the uh, the Christian religion is not necessarily based upon a word by word taking apart of the scripture. It's based upon the Holy Spirit dwelling within you and guiding you. And the scripture does hold up to scrutiny when you really get down to it. Um, but what I'm saying is to the Christian religion, that is not necessarily critical to have these tiny little differences sorted out. So, um, you know, arguing about uh, splitting hairs like this is uh, one thing, but s involving the Christians in this when it existed at least a hundred years before the Christians is another thing too. So that's the um, the truth about the 70 or the 75. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you.